Power cleans are the way we use in the weight room to keep the expression of power current with increasing strength levels. Power is force times distance over time. Okay, that's the math. What power is, is strength displayed quickly. Explosive strength is power. The vast majority of the human race, power is a limited commodity because the ability to explode is pretty much completely controlled by your genetic endowment. The ability to recruit a whole bunch of muscle mass into contraction right now is dependent on your genetic ability to do that. It can't be trained more than 15 or 20 percent, if that. If you are not explosive genetically, I can't make you explosively. More important, nobody else can either, okay? The test that we use to determine explosivity, the ability to display power in an athlete is called the, ver the standing vertical jump. And the standing vertical jump test is where you reach up as high as you can reach to measure your, your upreached hand. And then you, on a vertex, on a, on a device called a vertex, we have one outside, you jump up in the air and tap as high up on a selection of veins that are coming out from the side of the mast as you can. And what it measures then is the distance between your upraised hand and the distance that that same upraised hand came up off of the ground. Now, a, uh, during the jump. A standing vertical jump is not the same thing as jumping up on a box. It's not the same thing as running and jumping over a car. It's not like a basketball dunk. It has no aspect of technique to it other than it measures your ability to generate enough acceleration of your body mass to carry that body mass up off of the ground after your feet break contact with the ground. In other words, however long it takes you to react against the floor is how long you have to generate enough power to cause enough momentum in your body's mass to carry itself on up. And then that distance is measured by your hand. Oh, I hear people that are saying, well, I took my vertical from 18 to 36. No, you didn't. The only time that happens, the only place it happens is on the internet. You might have taken a guy at a body weight of 350 down to 185. His vertical jump may have gone up 10 inches. That's not who I'm talking about. I'm talking about you. What your standing vertical jump is, whatever it is right now, after three years of the best strength and conditioning program that's ever been devised, it might go up two inches, maybe. The reason this is important is because college athletics programs and D1 college programs, pro athletes, are sorted for the ability to explode. They are, they are selected on the basis of their ability to display strength very, very quickly. That's power. And that ability is measured by the vertical. The NFL measures vertical jump. The reason they measure vertical jump is because it cannot be trained. It gives them a picture of the genetics of the person they are dealing with. They want to know who they're dealing with. Training the vertical jump is not the point. We don't care if you got your vertical from 18 to 36. You didn't. But if you did, it doesn't matter because the vertical jump is a picture of your genetics. We want to hire people with 36 inch verticals, not with 18 inch verticals because we know that a guy with a 36 is strong, is powerful, and he can hit you. Power cleans do not make unexplosive people explosive. But as a person increases his strength with the squat and the deadlift, his whole body strength with the squat and the deadlift, it maintains a relationship between the strength and his ability to display that strength as power. As his squat and deadlift go up, if his power clean goes up too, then he is increasing his ability to display the newly acquired strength as power. Someone with a 22 inch vertical like me could get their deadlift up to 633 but still only have a 275 power clean. Okay, That's not who we want to hire for the D1 program. That's not a pro athlete ratio. 
the more explosive you are, the higher a percentage of your strength you can display as power. The purpose of the power clean in this program is to keep power display on pace with increasing strength. Okay. okay. Now the reason we use the power clean instead of the full squat clean is because this is not the Olympic lifting course. Full squat clean is a, is a way that Olympic weightlifters get under a bar to squat it up to finish the, to finish the jerk at the meet. Okay. And the more weight they can get stood up with the jerk, the more they can jerk, the more they can clean a jerk. Okay. Our purpose is to try to pull the bar over a longer range of motion because we're not going to the power uh, to the Olympic lifting meet. We are just trying to work on the display of strength as power. If I'm teaching novices strength and conditioning, the most important exercise, and we did this last time, is the squat. The squat uses the hips. It, it takes me quite a while to encourage people to use their hips to squat. And a front squat is an upright torso, vertical back angle, legs based exercise. If I turn around after having taught you the squat with your hips yesterday at this back angle and now give you an exercise that requires you to squat with this back angle, that's extremely confusing to people just learning the two movement patterns. So I wait until a person's been training a couple, three months that has enough experience in the squat so that they can successfully separate the two movement patterns. So let's learn how to clean. Let's do it. This is the first learning phase of the clean and we call this the hang, H-A-N-G, hang position. Widen your grip a little bit. This is going to be about one hand width wider than a deadlift grip because in this instance the grip width facilitates the racking on the shoulder not the pull itself. This is a sub-maximal pull, so we can do it with a little wider grip, okay? This is the hang position. The chest is up nice and high. Most importantly, elbows are straight. Elbows are long and straight. One of the primary problems we have teaching the clean is that many, many people, most people, think about putting the bar on their shoulders by using their arms. The arms have nothing whatsoever Nothing whatsoever to do with a clean. The arms are pieces of rope that connect the shoulder to the barbell. They don't raise the bar. The shoulders are connected to the bar by the arms. And this connection is best when the elbow is not bent. Bent elbow, straight elbow. Would you rather tow a car with a chain or a spring? Chain. With a chain, because it's not a deformable object. If we try to pull with bent elbows, then at some point during the explosion, some of the explosion will be spent in straightening the elbow out. To the slightest little degree, it will affect the pull. So we have to learn to pull with straight arms. Okay. An arm pull is a very, very bad habit, and Upright rows, those of you who do upright rows in the gym that anticipate learning how to clean it someday have just compromised your ability to do it because you implant the idea in your nervous system that arms raise the bar, arms don't raise the bar. Explosion from hips and legs raises the bar. So we're going to start right now making sure that elbows stay straight in every aspect of this pull. Arms don't bend until later. Chest is up. Second position we're gonna learn is the rack position. Just get it up on your shoulders. Elbows are up. Good. And the bar sits on the meat of the deltoids. The critical aspect of this position is that the barbell, stand up straight, the barbell is not in the hands. The weight of the bar is on the anterior deltoid, on the meat of this muscle belly that comes up into contraction as the elbows come up. This is shoulder flexion. This is shoulder extension. We want shoulder flexion because that raises the anterior delt and the barbell can now sit very comfortably on this muscle belly. 
If the muscle belly is elevated, it keeps the barbell away from the clavicles, which are right here. Okay, once the rack position is learned, what we're going to do is learn now to drop the bar down the chest. We do not operate the barbell either up or down with arms. You're going to drop the bar straight down your chest, catch it, but don't let go of it. Just exactly like that. And now the bar has come back down your chest in a position that stayed over the middle of the foot, just like it's going to be for the whole pull. This is efficiency. We don't want it out here. If you lower it with your elbows, it goes forward whole bunch of weight's not going to do well out there, okay? It just falls down your shoulder. The same way you don't raise it, you don't lower it with your arms either. And now we're back to the hang position. Okay, now, the third position we're going to learn is called the jumping position. With this same pulling stance, that's just fine. I want you to unlock your knees and your hips, just like this. More knees than that. Long, straight elbows. Pull, stand up a little taller so that the barbell is right here in the middle of the thigh, okay? Unlocked knees looks like this. Unlocked hips looks like this. We want both to unlock because both of them are involved in an upward explosion at the same time. And now, once again, straight elbows. The bar's not resting on the thigh. It's in contact with the thigh. Okay, a little higher than that. Now I want you to memorize this position on your thigh. It'll be a little higher than that. Straighten out your hips a little bit more. Right in there. This position is going to be thought of as the jumping position too. Jumping position is unlocked knees and hips, but it's also that place on the thigh. Now listen carefully. Every time you clean, the bar must touch that place on your thigh. For the rest of your life, the barbell touches you right there when you clean. Okay? okay? That's a commitment. That is absolutely essential okay. for a correct execution of a clean. Now, this is the jumping position, and as you might expect, what we're going to do from right here is we're going to jump up into the air. Now, with absolutely straight elbows, and this internal rotation like this, reminds you to keep them straight, so you're gonna flip them in, kinda of like this, and hold them nice and straight. Now from this position, chest up, you're gonna jump straight up in the air. Just jump up in the air, don't worry about anything else. High as you can jump, just like that. Again, jumping position, jump up in the air, eyeballs over here on the floor, way out here on the floor in front of you. Higher than that, jump! Good, excellent. Again, high as you can jump. Go! Now, think about these elbows. That time what you did was, and this is real common, when you cock for the jump, okay. you unlocked your elbows. Gotcha. Bar slides, okay? But it's, it leaves the thigh from right there. Long, straight elbows, eyeballs over here. Jump! Good. Long, straight arms. Long, straight arms. Go! That's the best one so far. Okay. Elbows have to be straight. If the elbows bend, before the jump, then during the jump, the elbows will straighten out. Okay. And all of the power has to get to the bar, okay? Long straight arms transmit all of the power to the bar. This time, you're gonna jump and catch the bar in the rack position. Okay. And that's basically a clean. Basically. That's basically a clean. We'll work the bugs out of it. Never do this. The elbows go from here to here. Okay. At every, every correct clean will go through this position. Okay, now this is the second phase of our little teaching method here. What we're going to do, now that we know how to clean the bar at the top, what we're going to do is get the bar down to a position that it would be on the floor. And we're going to start from the top and go down. So the first thing we're going to do is repeat this previous step. Now from now on, all of the pulls are racked in the rack position, okay? So jumping position, eyeballs over there, go! Good, just like that. We're going to start the hard part. We're going to drop the bar down to a position just below the patella, yeah. just below the patella. And then 
From that position in which we will be in deadlift mechanics, shoulders will be out over the bar. Slowly, we're going to drag the bar back up the leg until it touches that place on your thigh that you have identified as the jumping position. Jump. Now, that jumping position, position on the thigh is like a trigger sticking out of your thigh. The second you make contact with it, you explode. Okay? There's no pause there. So you're going to slowly. Now later, when we're doing the full clean, later on, the clean will have to be accelerated off the floor. But right now we're going to go slowly because we have to measure this position on the thigh. Stay out over the bar, slide the bar down. Good. Shoulders are back, chest is up, chest is up. A little lower than that, tiny bit lower, out over the bar. That's a pretty good position. Now slowly. That's good. That's good. Arms are straight at the pull. That's exactly how it has to be. Bent elbows slow everything down. The fastest way to move your arm is with your arm floppy. At no point do you ever say to yourself this, okay? This is one of the primary problems I have with USA Weightlifting's method of teaching because they insert this step. If you insert this step into the teaching method, you're teaching an arm pull. It slows the thing down. We want to reduce this method to the fewest number of steps possible. Now, what we're going to do, that we know how to pull it from below the knee, we're going to go down on the shin to the point where the bar would be where plates on it. Okay. 45 centimeter plate has the bar about seven and a half inches off the ground. Okay, so you're going to slide the bar down the leg. Stays in contact on the way down, on the way up. A little lower than that. That's about where it would be. Now, again, slowly pull the bar. Good. Just exactly like that. Okay, now, this is the last phase of this movement. Now we got some weight on the bar. We're going to go through these same three steps, but this time we're only going to do each one one time. Make it count. Okay. Make it count. Deadlift the bar to the hang. Clean grip. Just, just like that. Now, chest is up. Jumping position. Jumping position. Long straight elbows. Jump and catch. Up. Good. Now it's heavier. What do you got to do? Jump harder. Okay. Right? Hang position. Hang position. Now, this time, just below the knees, okay. same position. Shoulders are forward, hips are back, out over the bar, slowly. Yep, just exactly like that, good. And now, this last one, using your hook grip, reach down, touch the floor with the plates, come back up, slowly, okay. clean the bar. Reach down, touch the floor. Good control of the position. Come back up. Good. Good elbows that time. Excellent. Catch it. Set it on the ground. Good. Now, as a general rule, Brett, if you jump forward during the clean, you touched too low. Okay. All right? You see why that would be? Yeah. Look at my back angle versus this. If I jump here, I'm going to go up. If I jump here, I'm going to go forward. Okay. So make sure that you wait on the jumping position high up on the thigh. Okay. If you're jumping forward, you need to measure a higher place on the thigh to jump from. Chest up. Just exactly right. That's excellent. Coming off the floor a little bit faster. Hit the thigh. Just like that. Good. Just exactly like that. This is why we do it slow at first. Because we have to burn in that movement pattern so that it's always there. The same movement pattern is always there. If the movement pattern is burned in very thoroughly, you can do it faster and still do yeah. all aspects of the movement pattern. Just exactly like that. That's the timing. Good. Now speed it up just a hair, just a tiny little bit while still focusing on elbows. Wait, rotate your elbows in. There's your cue, see? There's your reminder. 
Just like that. Good, good, good. High reps on a, on a thing like this may be fashionable, might be an excellent way to get gassed or thrashed or murdered or what's the, what's wrecked, the, wrecked, wrecked. Uh, one, yeah. killed, gutted, eviscerated, skinned alive by the exercise. Okay, But they're also an extremely good way to practice doing bad technique and to never learn how to do the exercise really, really correctly. Remember, practice is for sport-specific stuff. If the sport is football, you practice football. You practice tennis. You practice Olympic weightlifting. Training is for developing strength. Okay, If you can't perform it, precisely and accurately due to the way you set the, the workout up, then you're not practicing. You're practicing doing it wrong okay. is what you're doing.